Let's see if I can get one of these links to work. As imperfect as technology often is. I'm not sure why my video isn't working. Mine's not working either. There likely is no perfect way. Good afternoon, everybody. Way to communicate this. My son will be dead. Many of our sons will be dead if nothing changes immediately. Anyone wondering about the health of our mental health care system? My son was in Boulder County Jail for I don't know, eight, nine months. Needs only to listen to an hour. It takes a toll. Every Wednesday at noon. It, it's destroyed my family. Mine also has been destroyed, very splintered. It's a meeting of parents with adult children with severe mental illness. We agreed to use first names with one exception. And none of these parents can help their kids. They can't get them out of trouble. They can't get them into the care they need. Care State Representative Judy Amabile still can't guarantee for her own son. So, you know, you know, I feel like that's that's why I am here is to work on that. Parents have to go through this to simply the general public. If they really don't have someone with a mental illness in their family, there's our stories of jails, hospitals, and short stays due to lack of beds. My kid was actively psychotic, and they said, nope, he's, he's got to leave. Police have arrested Jill's now much older son 50 times. Today, she lives in a permanent state of worry. It's very nerve-wracking, because I don't necessarily know when the next crisis event is going to happen, or when he's going to be on the streets, or when he's going to be getting more psychotic again. I asked them, how many people here by a show of hands, how many feel like their sons are one bad day away from doing something that'll generate a bad headline? That's a very big worry of mine. That's a huge worry of mine. And in Colorado, their stories are less exception, more rule. This year, Mental Health America looked at mental illness prevalence and access to care in all 50 states for adults. No state ranked worse. Treat it just like the wildfire that it is. To remedy the problem, this year with Amabile's help, the state legislature agreed to fund an additional 125 behavioral health beds. I went back to this group and I said, you know, we passed the bed bill. It's 125 beds. And one of the women on the call said, are you kidding? How dare you come back here and say you got 125 beds? That is such a failure. And of course, I understood exactly where she was coming from. She said, we need a thousand beds. Here's why. In the mid eighties, Colorado's two state psychiatric hospitals had nearly 1100 beds. Had bed space increased with population, we'd have nearly 2000 beds by now, but we don't. Combined, we have less than 600, which leads to stories. How hard is this on you? Like Sylvia's. Um, yeah, I mean, that's that's something that's often not reported on is the mental health of the caregivers. It's it's draining, but the failure of being able to find solutions is completely debilitating. It's 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 just like people need should be so pissed off that parents have to go through this to simply secure care. We're supposed to do something about that. I'm supposed to do something about it. And I haven't, I haven't been able to, to fix it. Our only option ended up being private care. Psychosis versus so our screaming and being dragged away. An uncommon level of candor found only within the confines of a group with a vested interest in communicating. We are grieving the loss of the child we thought we were going to have. Communicating yeah. to anyone willing Bye. to listen. See you next week. Chris Vanderveen, Nine News. Bye. If you're a parent who can identify with some of the stories you've heard here, Chris would like to hear from you. You can find a link to his email attached to this story on 9news.com.